the stock market is continuing its decline as uncertainties grow globally. Is there a slowdown in China? What is happening to Europe and the Brexit? Can the persistently high unemployment be stopped? And what will happen with the US presidential election? These questions need to be discussed. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Let's look at these various charts, which are going to show you exactly what is happening in the economy right now, beginning with this. S&P 500's nine-day losing streak is the longest since December 1980. I just did a video yesterday talking about an eight-day losing streak, and now we continue that with another day. This goes to show you how weak things are and how many questions are left unanswered. We have volatility for the reasons I discussed in the introduction. There is so much uncertainty and people are feeling that now the stock market hasn't necessarily fallen off a cliff but it is weak and it has has been consistently weak going into this streak like i said back to 1980 the s p 500 index finished lower on friday for the ninth straight session its longest stretch of decline since december 1980 stocks rose check this out after the open, as investors digested a strong report on jobs growth, there are no jobs being created right now. I will, I will show you, in fact, how they manipulate these numbers. So hang in there for just a second here. Look at the volatility index. I'm going to show you this in comparison to the S&P. But first, I just want to show you just the volatility index and actually if you see with the green on the side here it says payrolls and that is actually a flash crash just temporarily a mini one and it is a complete straight line downward and you'll see that here in this image in this chart these are the kind of things when you know it is computer algorithms controlling that. I also want to note the fact that volatility has increased to such a degree and the fact that it has been so consistent over several days now that it has never been at this streak ever. There has never been this much volatility consistently. You know, there'd be days where there's up days or down days. This is the most consistent. And that is all in this run up to the US elections, coupled with everything else. But the US elections are definitely something that. Pretty much everybody is finding themselves to have that feeling of uncertainty. Moving on, this is the volatility matched up with the S&P 500. You can see the S&P 500 day over day over day over day declines. Simultaneously, not coincidentally, we have the volatility index rising. And when there is volatility, there could be an increase in the stock prices, but it also could be a decrease and generally what we have seen is that high volatility when the stocks are selling off that's what I've generally noticed here and it is very apparent at this time of course like I said it could be the other way around however we're definitely seeing that right now and the traders whether it is a computer trader or a human trader they play off volatility they don't care what's happening with stocks they just need to use it as a tool and this is very dangerous because as a cycle continues they will expand on it further and they can almost exponentially change the fate of particular stocks or indexes or commodities or anything else it's very dangerous to play like this this is the US dollar and what we are seeing here is definitely percentage wise not that large but it is significant in the fact that it has declined day over day over day for the most part and this is a trend we need to chase the trends all the time and manage them and what I see here is an absolute trend that has been forming over the past few days leading up to the u.s presidential elections we can see that now the u.s dollar index we need to 
face it off against other currencies. Look at uh, this first though. Wages of production and non-supervisory employees. Let's just say the average worker out there. Their wage has declined. This chart happens to be since 2007. So let's say about a decade worth. And their wages, year over year change that is, have declined. If you take this chart and you stretch it back to, let's say, post-World War II, you have an even more apparent picture, more obvious picture of the fact that every single year, give or take, we have less prosperity and there is specifically less job uh, wages growth. This means that an individual, how much they earn going to their nine to five job means less and less and less every single year. Why is that the case? Well, you have increased payments that they need to make every single day. And that has been a very consistent. When you have things like the introduction of Obamacare and the premiums increasing so dramatically in a short period of time, you can actually squeeze the life out of people and bring them to a level where they are, let's say, part of the middle class and bring them down a notch or two. That's happening right now at this time, but it's been a trend that has been going on for a very long time. Looking at this, this happens to be the Turkish Lira. Record low at this time versus the US dollar. Why? Because of uncertainty. When you have the government jailing opposition, committing all sorts of crimes against sovereignty, individual sovereignty and freedoms, you have this uncertainty. As a result, you can see that the sell-off has begun. I will cover actually what's happening in Turkey in another video, but all I wanted to show you is the fact that this is what happens to a country when you have this um, instability that is occurring. It could happen with the currency itself. You could see that affect the stock market in two different ways. It can actually shake people out of the stocks, shake investors out or it can devalue the stock market like what's happening in Venezuela and have that currency devaluation push up the equity prices, right? Then you have different types of instability with um, perhaps caused by these issues I'm talking about or actually the making uh, becoming the cause and that is the civil unrest and the riots on the streets for different reasons. So think about that for a moment, how that all affects the currency, the Forex markets. All right, and uh, this right here, multiple job holders, not seasonally adjusted. As you look at this, you see major fluctuations, definitely. What I wanted to note is the fact that individuals, something I've, I've brought up many times, it's in my book, it's everywhere. Individuals take on more than one job, not because they love to work 16, 18 hour days. It's because they need to. They need to pay their bill. So they take on two jobs. But this is all skewed because when you calculate the unemployment rate, if a person has three jobs, that is technically three workers. So the numbers are completely out of whack. Now, what if you know, everybody that was employed had three jobs. Well, the market would look very good. In fact, hey, why not just put, as one commenter said, why not just give them a negative unemployment rate? That would be the new version of the reality that we see in the mainstream media and the government numbers. All I'd like to say about multiple job holders is that this skews reality and that's how they provide us with an unemployment rate that dips below five percent it is an absolute joke it, it really is laughable and it's something that really needs to be corrected we just need to go back to the old way of reporting whether it is the you know you want to take the 1990s method or the 1980s method whether you're calculating inflation or whether you're calculating unemployment we just need to go back in time before much of that manipulation was taking place that's all we don't need to create any new formulas or anything. Just go back to the way it was. 
And this right here is interconnected where you see the red uh, block here is the change in part-time jobs and the blue is the change in full-time jobs and you will notice something very clear while you have part-time jobs actually increasing and they would say this is great we are creating jobs but look over to the blue block and you will see a significant decline in the amount of full-time jobs so people are having less work overall this is partly due to Obamacare. If a corporation, if a business, small business, whatever it might be, doesn't want to pay you Obamacare, they can give you part-time hours. And in doing so, they're not you know, actually liable to uh, give you any benefits in this way. If they go over, I believe it was 29 hours, then they would have to pay you benefits. I've had people here on the channel tell me specifically that they have been affected by Obamacare in this way specifically. Now, you can skew the numbers yet again. You can take these individuals who really want to be working full-time. Instead, they're working part-time. And as a result, these numbers, unemployment numbers, are a big hoax. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me the thumbs up, it pushes these videos to the top of the YouTube search rankings when people are searching for this type of content. I am trying to expand the money GPS and I'm trying to get this information out to as many people as possible because we really need the truth. If you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. Just go over to Amazon where they have this look inside feature. That's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the book so you can see if you like it. Take care.